Story 1. Am I the a-hole if I tell my mom that my dad asked if I could be a surrogate for him and his new wife? My, 26 female, dad, 56 male, have been trying to have a child with his new wife, 40 female, for two years. They're attempting IVF, but aren't having any luck. They told me this in confidence and asked if I could keep the fact that they're trying for a baby to myself, which I have done, no problem. Recently, my dad called saying he had been planning to ask me something for a while. He asked if things with IVF don't work out, if I would be willing to be a possible surrogate with donor DNA. I was shocked and honestly disgusted by the idea. Background. My father and I don't have the best relationship. Parents are divorced and he was an alcoholic until I went to college. We went three years no contact because of an argument. Only started speaking again three years ago. All of this makes the fact that he asked so shocking. When I asked, I gave an awkward chuckle and I said, I don't even know if I ever want to physically have a child myself. And if I do, I'd probably use surrogacy myself if I could, you know? He was audibly disappointed and responded with, No, I don't know. There was an awkward pause and I said, Yeah, well, sorry, but I love you. We hung up. I was so shocked I thought I'd entered the twilight zone and started to feel nauseous. Was going to keep this to myself, but I don't think I can. I want to tell my mom, 60 female. We have a very close relationship and constantly tell each other everything. Even if this is the end of that conversation, that my dad felt comfortable asking is weirding me out. Slightly concerned, she might attempt to unalive him. My dad is a selfish person. I know he didn't consider the ramifications of what being pregnant and having a child would have on me at all, even if I would not be involved with raising it. I know part of why he asked is because he was hoping to save the money a surrogacy agency costs. It's grossing me out that he had to have thought about me being pregnant. It's gross, and I'd like to talk to my mom about this. Am I the a-hole if I talk to her about this after they asked me to keep the fact they're trying for a child a secret? It would give away that they're trying for a child and she might yell at him, giving away the fact that I told her. She wouldn't spread it to others, and I do feel like he crossed the line asking this. He probably did cross a line ask he did cross a line asking this, but I don't think that gives this person the permission to cross the line and talk to the mom about it. They did ask that she not mention them trying for a child. That was part of the agreement. What he did was rude and creepy and weird, but if you need to get it out, this person, if they need to get it out, they need to talk to someone else. There's plenty of apps and online help for, you know, just getting it out with getting things out in the open with someone. All sorts of therapy online you can get to. Story 2. Treat all prank calls as though they're serious? Sure. Have fun making 180 extra large pizzas. I work in a major pizza delivery chain that has so far been unsuccessful in out pizza in the hut. Our store is in a college town. And everyone is bored as hell right now, for obvious reasons. So we've gone from maybe one prank call a day to at least three to five. Which isn't much, but still really annoying with how much more business we've been getting. Again, for obvious reasons. The worst part is how uncreative and low effort most of them are. At least 80% of them are, Can I get a boneless pizza? Or, Is this the Krusty Krab? with the occasional insert GTA fast food order copy pasta here. This has been going on way too long, so I took up the habit of just hanging up whenever someone starts saying some stupid smack. The boss wasn't too happy about this, but didn't care enough to say anything, until an incident where I hung up on someone who wanted that boneless pizza, and he called back ticked because he actually wanted to order. So I get a stern talking to from the boss man, and he sends a message to the company's group chat app saying, I know we've been getting more prank calls than usual, but please don't follow in certain people's footsteps. 
then just hang up on them. Take the calls as seriously as possible. If they order something we can't make, calmly explain it to them and offer them something we do actually sell. We want to try and make money off of them, even if they're acting dumb. So the very next call is where the fun starts. Thank you for calling. What can I get you? I'm so hungry. Can I get an extra, 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 extra large pizza with triple every topping? I'm sorry, ma'am. We can only go up to one extra and double each topping. Huh. Okay, then. Uh, can I get 20 extra larges of each meat y'all have? So like 20 pepperoni, 20 sausages, etc.? These people are obviously high as hell and giggling in the background the whole time. Sure. Give me a second to ring it all up. Okay, so that's 180 pizzas. The total will be $1,000. Don't remember the actual price, but close enough. And it'll take about three hours. Awesome, thanks. We'll pay with a check when we get there. Dial tone. So I place the order, and not 30 seconds later, I hear, What the actual hell? from the boss, and he runs to the computer. How are they paying for this? He asked me. They said with a check. We do still take checks for orders over $200, right? They can't have been serious. Was this a prank call? Not sure, boss. You said take all calls seriously. He just grumbles and picks up the phone and calls the customer, and all I hear is super loud laughter as he hangs up. Meanwhile, other employees have started actually making the ridiculous order without noticing anything weird about it. So by the time the boss finishes the call and cancels the order on the computer, there are already five extra-large pepperoni pizzas in the oven. So we got free dinner for everyone working that night, as well as another message in the group chat app simply saying, in regards to my last message, please just use good judgment when taking orders. You gotta be specific about what you want. You gave them the instructions and they followed it. It's possible that they actually sell what they were asking for. The fact that they wanted 180 and the fact that they were going to come in with a check, that should have been a hang-up for any other circumstance. Just be clear in what you want and give your employees some credit. Let them make a good judgment if they need to. Story 3 Lady thought I was trans because I got my wife tampons. This happened last weekend. On weekends, I work part-time delivering food for DoorDash. In my area, I make good side money. Last Saturday, my wife texted me to stop by the store after work and pick her up some tampons, and she sent me a photo of the box that she needs. I'm a guy. Never used one, so I would be clueless without that info. So here I am, standing in the aisle, looking at all the female products. Still confused and lost, even with the photo, because, well, I don't see it on the shelf. Then I hear a lady say, See, no matter how you dress, you're still born a woman. I look up to see who's talking to who, and I see her. Just standing there, glaring at me. A Karen. I'm guessing in her late 40s, not much older than me. I responded with, I'm sorry, were you talking to me? As I look around and notice her and I are the only two in the aisle. She just rolls her eyes and starts a rant about transgender and so on. She's being very insulting to anyone who's transgender. So after she finishes, I just start laughing. Her face turns as red as my DoorDash mask that I'm wearing in the store. She starts to scream, then I cut her off. I'm six foot one, 280 pounds. Look, lady, if I was born a woman, would I look as fracking clueless and lost as I do right now? Have you not ever seen a man buy tampons for a woman? See, this is called being a good husband. My wife wants tampons, and I'll be damned if I come home empty-handed. I like keeping my head attached during the demonic possession week that you women have once a month, and I see you're taking yours out on me right now. <laughs> I hold up my phone and point at the pic. Now, do you see this fracking brand on the shelf? She backed away, eyes big, face drained, and walked pretty quickly down the aisle, tearing up. I finally found the brand, checked out, and made my wife happy. This Karen, 
was aching for a fight. She just saw a situation and just put her own beliefs onto it and all the assumptions. Amazing. If she was married, she probably as a husband was never bought tampons for her. Ever. Either that or she just so few of the times that he did that it was just out of her mind when she came across this. Amazing. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 4 Telling my mom move when she's in my home is so delicious. When we were growing up, my mom would often stand in front of where we were sitting and say, move. This was meant to indicate that she wanted us to move so that she could sit where we were sitting. I always found this really disrespectful. And I remember making that argument to my mom when I was a kid. She told me that when I had my own house, I could tell her to move. So I do. Whenever there's a gathering of people at my home when my mom is there, I make a point of walking up to her where she's sitting and say, move, so that other people notice. Of course, somebody usually comments or asks what I'm doing. And then I will playfully explain how this was a thing my mom used to do and that she said I could do it to her when I bought my own house. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Isn't it hilarious? Aren't I cheeky? I make a joke out of it and everyone laughs. But my mom has to wear this smeg-eating grin that was constantly plastered on my face growing up whenever my mom decided to insult me around other people and pretend it was a joke. Inside, I know she is absolutely livid, because it's literally the rudest thing I'm willing to do to another person. The rudest thing you're willing to do to another person is your mom? I can sort of see it. If you made the case to her, and she did say, well, you can do this to me, and you're doing it, she doesn't really have a recourse. I don't know if you've ever had follow-up conversations with her in private about this, saying, well, this is the way you acted towards me, and I wonder if you have, if she's ever had any kind of self-reflection or even any kind of remorse. A follow-up to this story would be pretty cool. Story 5. Mother keeps sending police to my apartment for welfare checks. I'm 23 and have been living away from my mother since I was 18. She has sent police to my house, school, and work multiple times over the past five years. The only reason she does this is because I don't reply to text messages quickly enough. I'm talking for 30 minutes and she's panicking and sending the police to find me. I've been very explicit in telling her to not do this. I've set up a rule where she must give me 48 hours to reply. I recently increased this to a week. She's ignored all of this and instead threatened to file a missing person report if I didn't reply. Literally two days ago, she moved within eight minutes of me when I said I didn't want her living that close. I feel harassed and frightened in my own home. I'm done trying to work this out with her. Is there any legal recourse I can take? I, I wish I knew. I I'm not a lawyer. I don't know the law on this kind of thing. About the only thing, as far as other cases are concerned, is just document everything. Save all the text messages. Save all the incidents. If the police are constantly being called to find you, I'm sure they have records of all those incidences. And having all of those, and having proof of them, might stand you in good stead if you have to do something like file a restraining order, or if it ever comes to court. I, I don't know anything else beyond that. Story 6 Why you shouldn't brag about your illegal activities to people that don't like you much. I started renting a house about five years ago. I had always lived in apartments, and I was excited to finally have some space and privacy. This was ruined within the first week by my butthole neighbor, and he made my four years at that house miserable. He's in his late 40s or early 50s, and despite seeming like a fully functioning adult, he has never lived outside his parents' home. He spends every possible minute cleaning or admiring his truck, so he practically lives in the driveway. 
when he isn't bragging about some butthole move that he just pulled on someone, he's hitting on the wives and daughters of anyone on the street. I moved in during the winter and started noticing footsteps in my yard in the morning. I found out that he was walking into my yard to look in my windows and see what I was watching or playing at night. I bought a simple security system and put a few cameras up and the stopped. Then he started mowing my side yard. He would mow it the day after I did. I asked my landlord about it and was told that Mike, the creepy neighbor, considered it his property and kept arguing about the property line. It's just grass, so I let it go. If I had guests over, he would stare at them and sometimes make comments when I wasn't around to hear him. If I was in the backyard, he would have a reason to be in his backyard. If I was in the house or the front yard, he was in his driveway where he could see in my living room. If I was mowing the yard, he would get out a lawn chair and sit and watch, putting it away as soon as I was done. It came to a head when I caught him sending his dog into my front yard one morning, instead of letting it out into his fenced-in backyard like he normally would. I told him to stay on his side of the property line, and he said that he was going to break into my house and smash my cameras and computer. Cops were called, and he got off with a warning. Last fall, I told my landlord that I was going to move out. During the conversation, I found out that Mike was on workers' comp for an injury that he got at work and that he was now bragging about how he was using his workers' comp checks to set up his own under-the-table landscaping business. My landlord, like most of the neighborhood, doesn't really like Mike. The landlord's son and family live across the street, and Mike has hit on the wife a few times over the years and has started to try and talk to their 17-year-old daughter. I waited for a day when he had his new work truck and trailer, with his name and number on the door, and I made a video of him working in his yard and carrying 50 bags of mulch and climbing ladders. I sent videos and pictures to the fraud department of the workers' comp office. Today, I just found out that he was found guilty of fraud, ordered to pay back every dollar, and may end up in jail. I'm happily living in a new place that has a lot of land between me and the neighbors. Well, they say good fences make good neighbors, and apparently the fences in this old neighborhood wasn't good. If he ended up in jail, I was wondering if this guy was going to stay where he was, but he still went on with the move, and apparently to a place that had a lot more space. So, hey, I'm glad he found somewhere that he feels more comfortable. And yeah, don't brag about illegal activities. People are listening everywhere. Jeez. We post it everywhere ourselves. We're kind of stupid as a race that way, aren't we? Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.